when people first see the technique of using complex eigenvalues, well, first you're relieved that you don't have to compute an eigenvector for both eigenvalues. But then the next question is, well, which eigenvalue should I use to compute the eigenvector? And the best is to use the eigenvalue with the positive imaginary part, and I'll show you why. So here's a linear system with matrix 1, minus 1, 2, 3, and you can calculate the trace is 4 and the determinant is 5. So using the quadratic formula or whatever means you'd like, you have eigenvalues of 2 plus or minus i. If we use 2 plus i for the eigenvalue, this is the adjusted matrix, and we can select the complex eigenvalue by switching the coordinates in the first row and changing the sign on the minus 1 to plus 1. And then we know how to write the complex solution with the eigenvector, the complex eigenvector, and the complex eigenvalue. Now all I want to show is the complex eigenvalue has positive 1 as the imaginary part, and that's the number in front of the t in the cosine, 1t. So I have cosine t plus i sine t. That's the way I would like it to be. If I would have used 2 minus i instead, then I could easily compute a complex eigenvector, but when I expand the complex exponential e to the 2 minus i times t, I'll have i times negative 1, and that's the coefficient of t, then I'll have cosine of minus t and sine of minus t. And there's nothing wrong with that, except I'd have to use a trig identity to resolve that. I'd have to remember that cosine of minus t is minus cos c, cosine t, and sine of minus t is the same as sine of t. It just would add an extra step. It's more awkward to write the cosine and sine with a negative number in front of the t with a negative frequency. It's just a little bit awkward. So the moral of the story is always use the eigenvalue with a positive imaginary part.